Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here, and this video will make sure that you understand the idea of a generalized cylinder in 3D space. When we hear the term cylinder, we probably think back to some geometry where we had an object that had a circular base and a volume that was built on top of that base, and we calculated maybe the volume or the surface area of this cylinder. A general cylinder in R3 isn't anything that has to be circular. In fact, it doesn't even have to be a specified height, so to speak. A general cylinder in three dimensions can be built using any curve in some plane. And if we imagine taking all the lines going through that curve that are parallel to one another that stick out of that plane, that gives us our cylinder. So this is our cylinder here. You can see here this curtain-like surface has the shape of the curve in the plane that it was based on. And if we were to orient our view of this surface to look directly along it in the correct direction, in this case, the way I've drawn it here, if we were to look at it directly from above, then we would just see actually that curve in the plane. Let's take a look at some examples of cylinders that can help us get an idea of how these work. So let's start with an equation we're probably pretty familiar with from algebra. We've got y equals x squared. If we were to graph this equation in 2D space in the plane, the graph of this would be a parabola in the xy plane. So now let's think about taking this 2D graph of our parabola in the xy plane and imagine this inside three-dimensional space. So I still have my parabola in the xy plane. Now this path here in 3D space is not the graph of y equals x squared anymore. When we consider y equals x squared in 3D space, notice in the equation that z is not specified here. We don't really have any restrictions placed on the z value by that formula. Since there are no particular conditions placed on z by this equation, z is allowed to take on any value. So as long as a point still satisfies that y is equal to x squared, z can be anything. It could be positive, negative, zero. So our parabola shape is allowed to run through space forever in the z direction, and this gives us a nice parabolic cylinder in fact, if I were able to somehow, again, look at this cylinder from directly above in the z direction, I would just be looking at that same parabola shape from 2D space. For our next example here, x squared plus z squared equals 4. If we plot this in a 2D plane, it would need to be a plane with x and z axes. And if we plot this x squared plus z squared equals 4 in an xz plane, this is actually a circle centered at the origin with radius 2. Now doing a similar thing to what we did with our parabola in the last example, if we imagine our circle in the 2D xz plane inside of three-dimensional space, and we notice that in this equation there are no conditions or restrictions on y, since y is not specified, then this circular shape is allowed to extend freely in the y direction here, and in that case if we oriented our perspective along the y-axis we could still just see the circular shape. So for this example, we get what we think of as a circular cylinder in 3D space. We'll look at one more example. Here we've got the equation y squared minus z squared equals 1. We might remember that this equation actually represents a hyperbola in the plane, and in this case it would need to be a 2D plane with y and z axes. So if we think about our hyperbola in this yz plane here, and now imagine it positioned inside of, again, 3D space in the yz plane, we start to get a similar idea of what the cylinder might look like. If we look at our equation that only involves a relationship between y and z, that tells us there's no condition or restriction placed on x values. So as long as a point in 3D space satisfies y squared minus z squared is equal to 1, then x can take on any value, and we get a cylinder in the shape of a hyperbola that extends in the x direction. Now, this idea of surfaces being built on the concept of parallel lines all running in a particular direction is not true for all surfaces in 3D space. This is a concept specific to cylinders in 3D space. Coming up next in our Calculus 3 video series, we'll introduce some new kinds of equations in 3D space that are quadratic equations, these equations are going to give us different types of surfaces known as quadric surfaces. You can check out the link to our Calculus 3 playlist in the description below. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.